Hey guys, this is John Chosha, and he designed the Weed Hopper back in the 70s. This was an ultralight aircraft that was very popular. I think they sold 13,000 of these. The early ones get a bad reputation because they couldn't find engines that were suitable for this kind of aircraft. But eventually, the ultralight people found the um, Rotax engine and the Anawas and Kahunas and things like that. And, and that's when the ultralight aircraft industry really took off. And these are all wood hoppers, uh, weed hoppers right here. This one has a little uh, bearing. Nice. Very popular, very easy to fly. This is a wood hopper. Now, the wood hopper was... Um, was designed for like popular mechanics or something like that. They did an article on building an airplane for under $500 or something. Now this is all wood. See that? Um, that main... That main beam going down the middle from the engine to the tail. It's just a piece of wood with fiberglass on it. It's a simple two-axis control. So it doesn't require any ailerons or anything like that. There are a lot of cables, landing wires and flying wires and wires to stabilize that engine and things. So you have tons of wires going all around. As a result, it's very draggy and slow, but look at this one's got pontoons on it. Looks like plywood and fiberglass pontoons. You notice how this little part under the pontoon where where it um, has a little jagged edge is right under the one-third of the lift of the, the wing. So that's going to be your center of lift. And that's where you want to kind of bubble it up so you don't get that suction under the water. Um, here's another picture of the wood hopper. Very simple. Popular mechanics. A small engine. That was a Chosha engine. He actually started making his own engines for a while. All of these tail feathers are made of wood and covered in fabric. You have regular bicycle tires for landing gear. As I said, a simple two, because of the dihedral, you see such a pronounced dihedral, um, it will bank into the turns. You don't need ailerons. Of course, you can't land in a crosswind very good, but you usually what you do with two-axis aircraft is you just come and land into the wind, and if the wind is off of the runway a little bit, then you just... When you get close to the runway, and then you, um, then you kind of straighten out for the runway. Not a big deal. Here's another picture of the wood hopper. It did have metal, um, that metal part there that you see. The rest is wood. I think I would go with wood on that. I'm thinking of. Um, Changing the design of this a little bit if I built one. This looks like aluminum, but it is basically, it's the same design, whether it's out of aluminum or wood. Now the, here's the Popular Mechanics article. Oh, build the $900 Popular Mechanics airplane. Anyone can fly. Mm-hmm. Really basic, really simple. Here are the plans as they were published in Popular Mechanic. Let me read this to you. It was a blistering hot day when we rolled out the PM Woodhopper for her first test flight. Our field at 
at an elevation of 4,500 feet, and the temperature was in the high 90s. That meant we were actually operating at a density altitude of around 9,000 feet. Really? The altitude equivalent of our heat-thinned air. Little swirling dust devils danced across the runway, warning of possible turbulence. Pilots learned to be wary of such conditions. Thin air lengthens your takeoff run and sharply reduces your ability to climb. Although it was not an ideal day to be flying a wispy 145-pound, 30-horsepower ultralight, especially an untried design that only an hour earlier had been a pile of parts on a hangar floor, it would be a severe test. Our colorful new creation was developed for popular mechanics by noted ultralight designer John Chosha, president of Weedhopper of Utah and maker of the popular kit, popular kit built Woodhopper, one of today's best selling ultralight sport planes. We told Chosha we wanted an airplane that popular mechanics readers could build in a basement using common shop tools and readily available materials. It had to be low in cost and simple in design. Most important, it had to be safe and easy to fly without requiring a pilot's license. The result is the Woodhopper, a light, easy to build, stick and fabric aircraft capable of providing all the fun and thrills of ultralight flying at one quarter of the cost of ready-made commercial models. It's technically foot launchable, although you don't really have to use your feet. So it qualifies for unlicensed operation under the FAA regulations. At 145 pounds, it's also well under the recently proposed 155 pound weight limit that the FAA may impose in place of foot launchability. So either way, you won't need a license to fly it. Complete plans for building the Woodhopper are available for $50 from Weed Hopper of Utah. See ordering information below. A free fact sheet will also be supplied by Weed Hopper. Send a stamp, stamp self envelope. For those interested in learning to fly an ultralight Weed Hopper, new flight training program will be open to popular mechanics readers who purchase the Weed Hopper plant, the Wood Hopper plans. Exciting first flight. To be on hand for the Woodhopper's maiden flight, we went to Weedhopper's new 20-acre flight testing facility near Ogden, Utah. Here, the 10,000-foot peak of the Wasatch Mountain loom awesomely to the east, and Mammoth Great Salt Lake stretches majestically into the desert to the west, a scenic paradise for ultralight pilots. John Chosha strapped himself into the Woodhopper's small open air seat, ran the engine up to sure into up to a reassuring roar, then released the brakes. Actually he took his feet off the ground. The craft sailed down the runway and despite the hot thin air, lifted off easily in less than seventy five feet a space no larger than many suburban backyards. After a few low-level passes to check out the handling, Chosha pulled the nose up into a maximum climb and was soon a tiny speck at nearly 5,000 feet. The flight was a success, so much so, in fact, that he we couldn't get Chosha to come down. For almost an hour, he zoomed and swooped in lazy, graceful air area, coming in for a landing only when his fuel tank threatened to run dry. A classic tail dragger. The popular mechanics woodhopper is an outgrowth of the 
standard model weed hopper, but is not a copy of it. Unlike the weed hopper, which uses tricycle landing gear and a tubular frame fuselage, the wood hopper is made largely of wood and styrofoam and follows a classic tail dragger configuration. Two main wheels in front with a small tail wheel in back. By eliminating the heavier, more complex tri-gear undercarriage, the tail dragger design saves weight, cuts cost, and simplifies construction. The wood hopper is built much like an overgrown man-carrying man carrying model airplane. Its sweeping wingspan at 32, 32 feet, only a foot shorter than that of the famous J3 Club Cub, produce tremendous lift. This, this, coupled with low structural weight, is what enables the aircraft to fly well on minimum power. Minimal power. You, you take off at a leisurely 27 miles per hour, cruise at 35 to 40, land at a gentle 25. Stall speed is a low 20 or 25, 21 miles per hour providing a safe margin well below normal operating speeds. Lift to drag ratio is a generous 9 to 1, meaning you can glide 900 feet for every 100 foot of sink. The fuselage is a single wood beam. Uh, the fuselage, that's the, the main beam going across from the tail to the engine, stretching from nose to tail, this supports the wings, engine, landing gear, and all other parts. Everything is held in place by a system of thin cables under tension, eliminating the weight and drag of rigid struts. Actually, struts have less drag, <clears throat> but they do have more weight. Despite its size, the wing is easy to make because it has a constant width and thickness throughout its length. This means all ribs are identical in shape and can be stack cut several at a time. Like the weed hopper, the wood hopper has a front mounted engine with tractor prop. The advantage, the advantages, positive airflow over the wing and improved stability. In many pusher prop ultralights, the weight of the pilot is used to help counterbalance the weight of the rear mounted engine. When you change the weight of the pilot, you shift the center of gravity forward or back, upsetting the aircraft's balance. In the front engine wood hopper, you sit so close to the natural center of gravity that a change in pilot weight has no effect on the balance. Uh-huh. Controls are simple. A pivoted steering yoke and engine throttle are the only controls you have to worry about. The yoke combines the function of turning and climbing or diving in one control. You turn it sideways to steer up and uh, to steer and move it forward and back to go up and down. It's so easy to use. You can operate it with one hand while keeping your other hand on the throttle. Like most of Chocher's other designs, the Woodhopper has no ailerons. Chocher believes the ailerons aren't needed on an ultralight. In fact, they may actually cause control problems in some situations especially in the hands of inexperienced pilots. Instead, all turning is done with the rudder. How do you roll an airplane without ailerons? It works like this. As you start to turn, the outside, wing, the outside wings forward into the airstream. Because of its upward sweep, the dihedral angle, it momentarily assumes a higher relative angle of attack than the inside wing. Mm -hmm. 
Increasing air pressure of the underside of the outer wing then rolls the plane into a natural bank in the same direction as the turn. Thus, smoothly banked turns can be made with rudder alone. Since there are no ailerons, the rudder is connected to the steering yoke and the elevator is linked to the yoke's pivot arm. This eliminates the need for rudder pedals while retaining the same familiar single stick control response of a conventional aircraft. The tail dragger design offers an important bonus too, since the tail wheel turns with the rudder, all steering is done with the yoke. Mm-hmm. Whether you're on the ground or in the air, in most tri-gear ultralights, ground steering is handled by a separate foot bar operating a pivoted nose wheel. As you approach takeoff speed, you must remember to switch from nose wheel steering to rudder steering. And the same in reverse. Okay, so anyway. Where were we? Did I miss a did I miss a pit? Anyway, this is um this is the gypsy which is very similar. See if this tunes in here. There's a little fuselage. The gypsy. So, anyway, I wanted to share that with you. And also, I wanted to show you that. I have the plans available. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And the plans are really cool, really simple. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? You just have basically, I mean, you have to choose your wood. You got to make sure you have wood that is um, uh, you need a air, aircraft quality wood. What's going on here? I know there's another page to this. What's going on? Oh, here we go. Here's the wing. You have styrofoam ribs, which can all be cut with one. Uh, you stack them up so you can get all your ribs cut. Here's the rib here. It comes with a pattern for the rib. <clears throat> this is the ribs right here. This is where you're in the front um, front spar. And the rear spar is not actually in the rear. It's actually in the middle here. And that is the wood hopper, my friends. Um, if you want plans for this, if you can't find them, uh, let me know and I will... Let's see, what should I put on the thumbnail? What would be a good thumbnail? I think this one, huh? Build a $900 plane, anyone can fly. Yeah, maybe I'll use that for the thumbnail. If you need the plans, guys, just leave a comment or something like that, and I will I'll send you a copy of the plans that I have. Thanks. Thanks for watching.